Cam Hiltz from Newmarket, Ontario. And I bought this 1965 Hayes about 20 years ago. I'm always looking for rare trucks. I found it on Wheels of Time, an American magazine. So funny to find a truck like that that's originally from Canada. It has a 220 Cummins in it with a 4x4 aluminum frame. Well, we did put air ride on it. It did have uh, rubber block suspension, which a lot of them had back then. It needed uh, quite a bit of work, but we did the interior and you know what it's like to rebuild an old truck. It takes a lot of time. We used it uh, at first to move trailers around for a customer that was in Newmarket that we had to switch trailers in and out. It came in handy when there was no trucks around. I was the only one that could drive it because of the 4x4, but most of the trucks in the 60s or 70s, not 70s so much, but we I started out with uh, 4x4s and 5 and 3s and duplex max and stuff like that, but big thing is the aluminum frame. We did extend it. The welder had a heck of a time welding that thick of aluminum. We had to put the hose in the cooling pail that he had to uh, keep this welder cool enough to weld. Uh, we got her done anyway. The diamonds we used to put on all the bumpers and stuff. There was no, not a lot of chrome back then. There's more on this truck than what would be back then that's for sure everything was painted but the usually the bullet lights and the the grill um, bumpers were always painted never had stainless steel bumpers this truck originally I guess the, the grill and the the names and stuff um, stood out on it but it was made in Canada in British Columbia Mac and Peterbilt got involved in buying Hayes and they shut it down. They used to use uh, an F-model Mac cab on a Hayes. That's the one they called the Hay Mac. This is the original cab. And if you notice, there's a, a breather intake on the side of the truck. That's the intake for the breather above the clipper sign. So air comes in from both ways and the cab comes down sort of like a Kenworth with a rubber tube between the cab and the breather in here. And Kenworth had it above the uh, battery box here where the breather come out and a rubber tube in here. The cab come down, but this one was just a little different. Well, years ago, some of you old fellas might remember that we used to have Markel insurance. And everyone that had Markel insurance had to have a sticker on the truck, visible. They would have spy cars around that would follow the trucks and do a write-up saying whether the driver stayed well to the right of the lane if he passed did he do it safely with enough time did he signal all kinds of safety things that are sort of missed today the write-ups would go back to the company and the company would post them on the bulletin board in the driver's room and everyone was always in there reading the uh, reports making fun of the drivers that that uh, screwed up. It was a very warm truck for Canada. Had lots of heaters in it, and I used to see the guys when I was a young boy with my dad going up the road in a Kenworth that he didn't order a heater behind the seat in, and we'd meet fellas in a haze and they would be in their t-shirt. It was minus 40 in Northern Ontario. And your dad was a trucker? Yeah, my dad was a trucker, my grandfather was a trucker, and my boys are truckers, and Maybe we should have done something else. <laughs> I don't do know. <laughs> oh, we haul heavy equipment. I've hauled just about everything over. I started when I was 12 years old washing trucks at a trucking company, and I got three bucks a truck, two bucks for a car. I got to drive the trucks in and out. I could hardly hold the clutch in in those B-Model Max, but I did it, and I ended up working in the shop there, and the... Uh, asked me to go to Sudbury, Ontario one night when I was only 15 years old. And I, they come out and said, can you go to Sudbury tonight? We're short of drivers. And away I went. I was so happy to get out of that shop. 
being around the yard and shunting trailers, they knew how I could drive and back in, and it was a little different back then. And you have quite a few old trucks, right? Yeah, we have quite a few old antiques that I've sort of, <laughs> I don't know. I don't smoke, so I build trucks. <laughs> <laughs> the Max that we have that I learned on, the B-Model Max, we got a couple of them, one with an integrated sleeper and the other one's just the normal cab. And then I reproduced a Kenworth of my, like my dad's Kenworth in 1964. We have one of those at home that's all done up. At one time, this uh, truck, all uh, hazes, always had their batteries on the back of the cab, sitting on right behind the cab in a box. They had six volt batteries in them to make uh, 24 volts and a series parallel switch on the starter. But this truck has been switched over to a 12 volt starter, just 12 volt, and I put the batteries in similar to a Kenworth. The batteries are on the right side and one stack always on them and it come out that one side there. I put this mast on to make it look nicer and it just a little more uniform. There's a vent on the roof of this particular truck and it opens up inside to the bunk. There's a chrome round a vent, vent a vent that opens. I've never seen anything like it, but they were, that's what I mean. They were sort of ahead of their time and they had another uh, vent right here. I'll open it. Oh, there. Had another vent, so you got Oh, wow, air. I was expecting that to open. <laughs> well, this one opens too, so it had a vent here and another vent here, but this would give you like a blast of air being in the front. It was pretty amazing. And there's the sticker you were talking about. Yeah, that's the Markel sticker. North America. Okay. Um, some of you fellows might remember the um, the uh, some of the Cummins, the older Cummins, had a, a pressure pump that you could pump the pressure um, up on the fuel pump so it would uh, start better. And of course it had a decompression cable but this would pump the pressure up. It's now unhooked because there's a newer style pump on it now. It's on the 220 Cummins. This folds down and uh, you can get out all the gauges and the switches, pretty neat. And all you have on the dash is a pressure, fuel pressure gauge and speedometer and um, tack. Oh, this was, this, this was kind of unique. This was something that you pulled it and there was an air gauge right on the right on the pressure right on the switch that released the trailer brakes this was your emergency trailer uh release and here's your low air your, your low air uh and the wipers are underneath yeah, of there yeah, the wipers are underneath there what air wipers that are are uh yeah a nice little hook. I got the other little hook too. Imagine running double the, in this though, going to, going to, well that's a nice truck, eh, that Merman? Yeah. And the heater's under here. The heater's under this seat. And under this seat. And there was one under that seat too. 